All right, so this deer is thinking, well, I'm hitting the ball well today, but I just can't make, make a putt. My short game is failing me. And, but then this deer is like looking for his ball in the woods. He's been way off target the whole day. And then this deer is making fun of the other deer because they can't find their ball. Okay, well, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> we are not the psychology of golf of deer. We are the psychology of golf of human beings who try to play this game. I guess if the deer tried to play, sometimes the deer would be better than the human at this game that is such a challenge. But today we are at a place that is it features deer. Uh, it is a place called Dove Canyon, Dove Canyon Golf Club in Tribuco Canyon, which is inland Orange County, California, a beautiful area. It's like Behind a, it's an, a gated community that was built around the golf course. The golf course itself was designed by none, none other than Jack Nicholas. He was pretty good at golf. And uh, when you go in, you you go, you enter the the. There's like a gate. You tell the person you're going to the golf course. You immediately open up to this uh, amazing looking neighborhood. The practice facility is is the dri driving range. You hit off of grass. Uh, there's a there's a chipping area next to the driving range. The clubhouse is fancy. <laughs> so how did I uh, how did I like to include a disclaimer when I do these um, psychology and golf videos from private courses? How did I get access? Well, I emailed ahead. I emailed to Gabe. So thanks to Gabe um, for allowing access uh, on this particular day. And uh, hopefully uh, you all who have played Dove, Dove Canyon before, members, enjoy this, uh, this video. So I'm going to take you through it as I usually do, uh, kind of breaking down each hole as I go along. I'm also going to talk a little bit more about myself and my game maybe than usual because this, this round of golf came at an interesting time uh, for me and my golf game. So first of all, let's look at the uh, scorecard and let's talk about the tees. So uh, the Nicholas tees, 7,000 yards. Uh, Hmm. Maybe you don't try those at home unless your handicap is real strong. Um, <laughs> uh, then there's a player's option, 6,600 yards. The championship option, 6,500. So when, when I got to the first tee, I was actually intending to play the championship tees at 6,500 yards. And so I asked the guy, the, the starter, I was like, hey, which ones are the championship tees? And he pointed to those. And so I went to those. Turned out those were the regular tees at 6,071 yards. I think he was trying to like help me out because <laughs> by the time I got to about the fifth or sixth hole, I was like, yeah, these are definitely not the championship tees. <laughs> but like if you're playing a course for the first time, and this is a difficult golf course with lots of danger, as you'll see, I, I, I don't, I'm not, don't, don't worry. I mean, if you're playing down a little bit by playing the regular tees, only 6,071 yards, just do it. And as you'll see, like, it didn't really help me <laughs> on this particular day. I didn't play my best golf. So yeah, uh, the psychology of that would be if you're playing like a, a tee that's a little bit further forward than you're used to, that's probably a good thing because it's going to give you a little confidence boost. Maybe you'll score a little better on the golf course than you would have ordinarily. And that'll help you the next time you play golf. Maybe the next time you, if you're going back to the same course, you can, you can bump yourself up and play the, the further back tees. But I'm going to say play as far forward as, as you feel like is fair um, and enjoy. So that's what I was, that's, I, I was thinking, hmm, this is good. I'm going, to, I'm going to score better today than usual. Mm, no, not quite. All right, so let's show you the, the first hole. And I'm going to pause this after about three holes and talk about myself a little bit too, my game. So the first hole, um, uh, like I said, only 442 yards from the regular tees. So uh, I say only. That's, this is a par five. So... It's a birdie hole. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you know that for each hole I give two ratings. Uh, one is a fear rating, one is a fun rating. And so fear rating 18, right off the bat, this is like the least scary golf course, uh, least scary hole on the golf course. It's a scary course, but <laughs> least scary hole and eh, not super high on the fun scale either because if it was one, it would be the most fun. This is closer to the bottom. A lot of fun holes in this course, but um, this one's pretty straightforward, wide open, super not super long. There is a big bunker in the toward the front of the fairway, but it did not seem too imposing. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna hit my first drive of the day, and I did end up in the fairway here. Off to a good start. 
it was uh well i was i was dri i ended up driving the ball well on this particular day so i'll give myself credit on that yeah you're starting to see the conditions here really well manicured grass uh really well uh, done bunkers um, i'm not going to go into a bunker on the first hole but i will eventually don't worry so I hit a three wood there. I'm just right of the, the bunker, just right of the green. This was a nice uh, chip to get me within striking distance of a birdie on the first hole. This hole, uh, you can see the neighborhood in the back as I attempt my first birdie of the day. Um, it winds through the neighborhood, but it also winds through nature. It's a really good combination of, oh, almost, almost knocked in that birdie. Uh, first hole, that would have been nice. Maybe it would have changed my uh, feel for the day, but. <laughs> par on the first hole. All right. So a combination of neighborhood and nature on this on this course. Really, uh, really fun. So second hole, par four. Um, again, the, I mean, the fir I've got the first two holes as the least to the two least scary on the golf course. I don't know if that was because I came out and I was just trying to enjoy the moment. I mean, there's there's a lot of bunkers on this on this hole. Uh, and I managed to avoid them. So maybe maybe that was why it was less scary, but there's a lot of bunkers on a lot of holes here. So not super scary. I mean, some size to the fairway um, and also not super fun. So these are just straightforward compared to some of the other fun holes that you're gonna see. And this is all based on first impression, of course. So like, maybe these holes would get new ratings if I played this course again. Hopefully someday I will. All right, so the driver's off to a good start here. I am in the fairway, avoiding all of those bunkers. Second hole, nice backdrop here with the homes. A lot of them are elevated, kind of overlooking the, the course. Good weather, by the way, inland Orange County. I feel like, man, it, it's almost always nice weather. Uh, this was in the summer, uh, but it was nice and cool. All right, so my approach there uh, was left off to the right. Uh, I, <laughs> I did that a lot on this particular day, left my approaches off to the right. Uh, here's a, a tricky chip. I actually hit it really well, but it kicked left as you look down at the bunker and the scenery there in the back. And so it left me with a uh, pretty lengthy par putt. So I was staying out of danger here, but I also wasn't off to an amazing start. And I'm, oh man, two, two missed putts that were super close, first two holes. All right, hole three. This is a little bit longer, 416 yards. Nothing special. I mean, this is fun rating 18. First three holes, I mean, if you're trying to put up a number here, Jack Nicholas was like, let's give people a chance on the first three holes to think that this course is not as bad as it is. And then let's um, put 47 different bunkers on every single hole after that. <laughs> That's kind of how it felt to me. Again, first impression, but least fun in that it was just a straightforward hole. Uh, by the way, you get a bogey, uh, this, this gets a bogey hole uh, distinction because the fear rating is a little bit higher than the fun rating. F fear rating 15, still not high though. These are first three holes again, nothing, nothing fancy compared to some of the later ones, but also nothing scary. I mean, this is fun. Look at the, it's fun to look at. Look at the, the uh, kind of the neighborhood blended with the nature on the left there, that nice big hill. I'm not scared on these drives, so maybe that's why I'm starting out in the fairway. If you're uh, if you're seeing wide open spaces, that should in, uh, that should help. Usually, not always, but usually. But alas, uh, I was uh, I was starting off with some uh, fades to the right. I was trying to fade the ball, as we'll talk about here in a minute, and I was fading it too much. So I ended up in one of these Jack Nicholas bunkers that is pretty fearsome. Uh, and then I launched the ball over the green, almost hit my friend there, <laughs> who you'll see in some of the videos. That's a nice look with the neighborhood there. And I mean, it's scenic as I'm launching the ball out of the bunker wildly. And then I've got an impossible chip here, which I think I actually hit a pretty good one, but um, it just, there's no way to stop it on this green unless you hit a huge flop shot, which I don't have as part of my arsenal. So I tried to punch it up there and it just kind of rolled all the way down to the other side of the green. And then I left myself with a bogey putt here from the lip of the fringe <laughs> and the green, not an easy putt. I actually made another pretty good effort there. So a double bogey on the third hole. 
All right, so let's pause and talk about uh, psychology of golf here for a minute. Um, I'm a professional sports psychologist, by the way, not a professional golfer. Uh, so there are a couple things that I learned uh, on this particular round and set goals for myself on the following round. What happened was I shot a 77 at a local course. Um, if some of you know Santa Anita Golf Course in Arcadia, I shot a 77 there the round before I came to Dove Canyon. So I was like, whoa, I'm a eight, nine handicap, but look at me, like this is good golf. And I was, the key was I was able to shape the ball that day, which I like, like never, I've never done before. And I've been playing some, you know, um, a good amount of golf summertime. I teach at Cal State Northridge. So, <laughs> uh, you know, school year comes, maybe I don't have quite as much time for golf as in the summer. So I've been playing a lot. That day, the day before this round, I was able to hit a fade when I wanted to. I was able to hit a draw when I wanted to with both my driver and my irons. It was, it was I mean, I'd never been able to do that before. So I arrived at Dove Canyon. And I was like, okay, I'm going to look at a, at a green or a, a fairway. I'm like, okay, this looks like a fade. This looks like a draw. And I'm going to try to hit those shots. But I couldn't. Like, it was just not the same day. Uh, I, I mean, I had never had a day <laughs> like the one before. So, like, I, I, after these first three holes, I hit two fades, right, uh, with my irons. Uh, it was, I think it was a seven iron on the second hole and a five iron on the, on the third hole. Both of them were right of the green. Seventh hole, that was the safe side, so I got lucky. Uh, I'm sorry, on the second hole, I got lucky. On the third hole, I hit it into the bunker. So as you'll see this particular round, I tried to stick with it. I was trying to fade those shots. They were fading too much. I kept trying to fade the shots. They were fading too much. So the adjustment that I made for the following round after this one was after three holes, which is why I'm pausing now. After three holes, I felt like I had a sense for what I had. The driver was going straight in this particular day. I was able to, to keep it in the fairway through three holes, three fairways. So great. Maybe I can even swing a little bit harder and try to Get it out there. That would be one, one thing I noticed. The second thing was that my irons were fading to the right. So the adjustment would have been stop trying to fade because if you, stop, if you start trying to draw it, for me, maybe that just straightens it out. Like it's not gonna draw now, but it's gonna straighten it out. So after three holes, I should have, and what I did the following time I played golf, <laughs> was I stopped trying to shape the ball but I, I started trying to just adjust to whatever I had after three holes. Whatever, seemed to be, whatever I seemed to be doing that day, I tried to then work with that and give it a couple holes to try to figure out, okay, well, I'm not always drawing it, I'm not always uh, fading it. But on this particular day, it was clear I was fading my irons, so I, sh I should have stopped trying to fade them. And we'll talk more, a little bit more about um, the round after this <laughs> uh, a little bit later on. So. The psychology would be notice what you've got, what you're working with that day, and adjust to it. And I think that might be especially important when you're like me. You're not playing all the time. You're not professional. You're not um, practicing every day. I can't. I don't have time to practice every day. So then, every day is going to be a little bit different. But if you figure out what you have and adjust to it, that's what I'm working on now. And I think that is going to serve you well because you you'll be able to derive confidence from whatever you have that day, even if it's not perfect. Okay, let's go back to hole four. Hole four is par three. Uh, fear rating two, fun rating four. Okay, now we're suddenly in some very exciting looking terrain here, which I'll show you in a minute. You can see on the map there, there's a huge bunker in the front, the front left. And if you look, I'm just gonna freeze it on the tee shot here. You're hitting over a canyon. You're hitting over Dove Canyon. <laughs> So off to the left, if you're, I mean, if you're short, you're in the bunker. If you're short, too short and too left, too far left, you're in the canyon. So that's a scary looking shot, but it's also a really nice visual because you've got this, um, this canyon coming in. And you got plenty of trees on the right. I mean, it's a very well um, designed bunker. <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, fading the ball again. This is going to be the theme here. I'm fading it, fading it too much. Left myself with a difficult lie here in the back. I'm on the safe side, but I'm in the chunky grass. Uh, the, they, they do leave the rough uh, with a little, uh, little bit of um, depth here. 
So it was chunky and I muffed that chip. <laughs> so it's not a very strong start for me. However, let's look at this chip. Commit this one to the memory bank because I was able to hit this one exactly how I wanted to and it almost went in. All right, a tap in par for me on, or I'm sorry, tap in bogey for me on hole four. I wish it was a tap in par. All right, tap in, uh, tap in. Hole number five, <laughs> let's, I don't think I'm gonna have a tap in on this one. Hole number five, handicap number one. Okay, so as I recall, you've got a forced carry on this hole, which I don't, and a huge bunker on the right side of the fairway. I don't know if that's why it's handicap one, maybe 397 yards from the white tees or the regular tees. Maybe there's some extra distance here. It didn't scare me that much. I, it, would, it, it should scare you if, you can't, if you're struggling to get the ball in the air. I just had uh, three, four holes where I was able to get my driver in the air. So it's not a huge long forced carry, at least not from, the, um, from these tees. But it is a nice visual, so I'm going to give it a, a middle of the pack rating for fun, middle of the pack rating for fear. You can see the, the mountains back there in the background. Those are the ones framing Orange County. And by now, I was uh, properly adjusting to the fact that I was hitting the driver well, so I, I think I swung a little extra hard to get it over the canyon and into the fairway. So I'm in good shape here on, uh, on this hole until I hit a mud ball. I feel like I just rolled down. And there weren't this was like the only place in the whole golf course where there was too much water. <laughs> I happened to land in that place. And then I made it tougher for myself. So now I'm chipping up for birdie. And I'm on the green, but I am not close enough where I feel like I have um, uh, solved the issue. And I'm going to leave that par putt a little bit short. Not a terrible start for the putter, but that was a that was another bogey. So I'm on the bogey train here, unfortunately. All right, hole number six. Man, the driver's going well, but the iron's not so much. Hole number six, however. This one, 301 yards. That's a short par four. For me, I'm hitting the ball 260, so I might be able to get it pretty close here. A birdie hole. Fun rating is much higher than the fear rating. Fear rating 16. I looked at this hole and I'm like, this is just almost looks like a long par three. So not much fear. And then the fun comes from just looking at a hole that you think you might be able to get to. The, ca the canyon is on the right, so don't go too far right. But there's a slope from left to right coming down on the left side. And I just uh, uh, hit the snot out of this one. <laughs> so... Here's a, here's a good hole for me. Finally, a really good hole. A chip, too, that goes almost lands in the cup for eagle. And it rolls a little bit past. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what happened here was it, you can see how far it was. It rolled a little bit past. And uh, this birdie putt we didn't get on film. Well, I missed the birdie putt, so I guess it's just as well. I had to settle for par. But that was a good hole. Uh, I didn't go in those gnarly-looking bunkers on the right side, as you can see in the back there nor did I go in the canyon, which is behind those, so. Okay, let's go on to hole number seven. Trying to right the ship here um, as a, whatever, eight handicap. I'm mostly bogeying holes right now. It's a little bit worse than usual. Not a ton, but we're, let's stay tuned for this hole. All right, the par threes. The par threes at Dove Canyon really impressed me with just how visually appealing they were. So I gave them all really good fun ratings. This one is probably the least Fun? Well, we'll see uh, out of the par threes. Fun rating nine, though. Very good top half. Fear rating seven because you're, you're, you've got a forced carry again. You're trying to go over the canyon again. <laughs> but handicap 17, 156 yards with a good visual. The visual should inspire you here. I mean, look, you know, you got the backdrop there. The trees behind the hole and the canyon in front of you. But I just faded the heck out of this one, and it almost it was almost lost. It hit the slope there on the right side, crossed the cart path, uh, and so I was hitting from here. We didn't we didn't film all of this, <laughs> uh, not because I asked for it not to be filmed. I mean, this is a nice look at the canyon and all the all the foliage and stuff back here. <laughs> but my ball was hitting out of the dirt and with some weeds behind me. It was I was lucky that it was playable. Uh, but then I kind of launched it over the um, 
the green. So I was like, eh, let's just not film this one because you're not going to be able to tell where it goes. <laughs> so I can tell you it went past the hole onto the hill in the back there. And then I have like a chip that's coming down the hill with some like curving action. So that I chipped it, but then I had this putt for par here. No, it was a bogey putt. Oh man, I, I fouled up this hole. <laughs> it's a double bogey. <laughs> oh, I can laugh about it now. All right, so that solidifies the rough start here, even after I had parred number six. But I give the course credit, man. Some of these fear holes are really scary. Hole number eight, not quite as much. This is a more straightforward par four uh, with a, a fear rating that's about equal to the fun rating, 12 and 12. So yeah, it's a par hole. I like the, the curve here. This is a left to right curve and I was coming off a double bogey, So I was like, I'm gonna hammer this drive. Sometimes you can use like the follies of the previous hole as motivation. So I was doing that here. Mm, I, it's easier to do that when you're actually hitting the ball well <laughs> off the tee. I just missed the fairway on the left side here. And, uh, and you're going downhill with the approach. So I'm trying to pull a, a pitching wedge out of the rough and don't think I got all of it. Oh, what did I do? Oh yeah, I went long with it. Yeah, I did get all of it, but I went long. And so I had a massive birdie. I knew there was something wrong with this hole. What was it? It was the putting. I had a massive birdie putt here that I thought was more downhill than it was. There's like a, a layer to the green on the back there that fooled me. I thought it was gonna be a downhill putt, but you're actually going up the big hill, right? Like the, the hole in general is downhill. The, the putting green is about flat, so it deceived me. And then are we gonna watch me three putt? Yeah, we caught this on film in a three putt. Uh, all right, just couldn't pull it together. All right, hole number nine. <laughs> it's a rough day, but I'll talk more about that at the end. Okay, hole number nine, uh, par five. Speaking of rough, fear rating one. And this is a par five. Normally like par fives for me are like, you know, like birdie opportunity or at least par opportunity because I, you know, I'm hitting the ball well off the tee and whatnot, especially on this day. I feel like I can get it there close in a second shot. Handicap five, fear rating one, fun rating, middle of the pack. So let's talk about this. I mean, you can see on the map there, um, you've got a gigantic, long, thin bunker on the left side of the fairway that could obstruct, or, uh, that could um, block your tee shot. Then for the second shot, you've got a force carry over another bunker, which is even bigger and goes all the way from like, I don't know, like 150 yards out all the way up the left side uh, to, the, to the green. I mean, there's these bun Jack Nicholas, man. I mean, are they really even bunkers? They're more like dirt traps, I feel like, because the actual bunkers are different than these. They probably have a name for it there at Dove Canyon. But anyway two really gnarly looking areas to hit the ball on the left. And then on the right, I was like, hmm, I'll just hit the ball to the right side. But on the right, okay, so when I hit this ball, <laughs> I was like, I think it's gonna be okay. It's on the right side and it's away from those bunkers I was talking about on the left. Eh, should be fine. It wasn't, it was out of bounds. <laughs> So it's a really thin tee shot, like almost like an iron. I don't know, like you should hit an iron or something off the tee, but that's a par five. So do you really want to hit an iron off the tee? And then the second shot, you have to clear that other bunker. So, oh man, I, I, I think I would just try to hit a driver again in this hole, but know that it's a, it's a narrow fairway and maybe try to go for accuracy instead of distance. Oof. Fear rating one, this is, there's just a lot of stuff going on here. So this is my um, dropped ball. So now I'm, uh, this is gonna be my third shot from over by the cart path. Man, actually got a, a good piece of this one with a five iron. It's gonna navigate its way over the, the bunker that crosses in front of the, the landing area there. Ooh, that was a stressful shot too, because I felt like I might miss that one and then end up in triple bogey land. Well, I chunked that uh, that chip again. I was just unnerved at this point. I was like, man, this is a tough hole. Hit a good shot, but then I couldn't follow that up. So now I'm chipping for par from off the green. Ugh, triple bogey is still in play. <laughs> Luckily, I hit a decent chip finally here. 
got it at least to the front part of the green for this bogey putt. Hmm. Okay, so finishing the front nine with a with a struggle. Uh, good putt, missed it. Had about three putts like that on the front nine. All right, so I was able to tap in there for for double bogey. Whew. Okay, so tenth hole. There's a, a little snack shop uh, in between uh, the nines. Uh, there's also a putting green right there. If you wanted to like pause and figure out what's going on, maybe I should have done that uh, with my putting stroke. But then you get to hole 10. Hole 10, fun rating five. This is another one of these par threes that's like really interesting, really fun to look at. Fear rating eight, which is there. It's not necessarily quite as scary as some of the others. So I'm calling this a birdie hole. Let's look at the visual. You're going downhill. I can't remember how far, but maybe like 40, 30 yards, something like that. So you gotta uh, take one club less probably than what you would normally hit. I've got a six iron here, which again, I'm like, oh, just hit it left of the green and try to fade it. Well, I tried to fade it and it faded too much. That's the trend today. And it's headed for the bunker. All right, well, not quite turning it around yet. Here's this, look at this gigantic bunker. Probably should have given this hole a higher fear rating just by the size of the bunker. There are a few of these. Ah, frustration. <laughs> Couldn't get the ball out of the bunker. One thing I recommend here is trying to take your time if you have to hit more than one bunker shot. So I was getting ready to rush through it, but then I think I take a deep breath here. Yeah, there's the deep breath. Okay. Trying to at least pause. I probably should have backed off and taken more time, but just you got to pause when you're doing this. This one I launched over the green, so I was kind of overcompensating. Uh, sometimes it's hard to take your time too when you're like hitting so many shots that everybody's looking at you and waiting for you. <laughs> oh man, so this is a bogey chip, which is well struck. I, again, I, I was in a tough spot. Here's actually a putt for double bogey that was probably my best putt of the day. What did I do on this putt? Well, I was upset, but I was like, you know what? I am not making triple bogey here. So I had a little bit of determination that came in and I was able to make a downhill curvy left to right putt for double bogey. Ooh, okay. So I can just, I mean, just remembering these, these holes, I, I, can, I can feel the sweat um, that I was, uh, <laughs> all of the sweat that was coming off of my head. Oh man. All right, well, let's see if we can uh, start to have a little bit better back nine. Par five, 529 yards. I am driving the ball well here. And we've got a fun rating of two. Okay, fear rating 11. Let's get to it. Fun looking hole. This is the one where you've got the deer. The deer that we saw at the beginning of the video. So this is a far away look at the deer. <laughs> Grazing, this is the fairway. And then you've got the, uh, the video that I played for you at the beginning with the deer walking around. This is the beginning of the fairway. They're running around a little bit. All right. <laughs> so I am trying to channel the determination now that uh, helped me to make that tricky putt on uh, 10 for double bogey. That said, I, I, don't, I don't think I was trying to blast this tee shot. I was trying to go for accuracy because I could see that the, the um, accuracy was, was important here. <laughs> accuracy is always important, but some holes are, are easier to to uh, navigate than others. This one, there's a big giant tree, which is, oh. Uh, <laughs> so I was trying to hit a low three wood. I did hit a low three wood, but I hit it straight to the right, not far enough that it hit the tree, but far enough that I was in this perilous position. I somehow stayed in bounds with that three wood. So I was still struggling a bit, but I, it was a par five and I had this shot. This shot was an eight iron over the next tree some good looking trees in this hole. Maybe I was inspired by how good they looked. This one was a good eight iron over the tree. And then this might've been my, that last one was the putt of the day. This one might've been the chip of the day. It almost went in. Go, birdie with the chip. No, but a tap in. Okay, managed to save par with a good chip there. We'll talk about my uh, chipping later on as well. Trying to stay positive. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, so hole number 12, fun, fear rating 13, fun rating 13. The back nine is generally for me was more fun than the front nine. Maybe it's because I was playing a little bit better. Spoiler alert. 
Um, <laughs> but there's just a lot of variety. You're back in nature here. So anyway, hole number 12 was nice. Yeah, I would, wouldn't say it stood out above some of the other holes in the back nine. But yeah, look at the California hills in the back there. California golden color. This one was like a drive that was a little bit tight on the right side, but I think it worked out fine. It, yeah, barely worked out fine. All right, so trying to get that fade going with the eight iron. Trying to get that fade going with the eight iron. And well, this one, this one was actually not a bad shot. It just wasn't, um, probably should have hit a seven. So a little bit short on the, uh, on the safe side. Trying to play the safe side of these holes, but just not going there very often on this day. Not with the irons. So here's a tough chip. A lot of these chips were, were tough because the, the greens were, uh, seemed like every time I had a downhill chip. <laughs> Couldn't have all been downhill, but it seemed like most of them were. This is a far away look just to give you a look at the scenery here in the foliage as I missed a par putt. Mm, another close one. It's about four putts now that I missed close. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be uh, acting like I can make every putt though. All right. Hole number 13, this one, super fun. Uh, another par three that's just super fun. Uh, fun rating three, fear rating five, 112 yards, fear rating five. Why is it so scary? Well, you can see on the map, there's a massive um, water hazard followed by a bunker in front of the hole. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it wasn't like the scariest shot of the day, but you definitely want to get the ball in the air here and avoid that bunker on the right. I think I kind of fa give, uh, gave up on my fade here finally. I was like, I'm just going to try to hit the ball straight. And I did with the pitching wedge. So I've got a birdie putt from the fringe. All right, progress. See, we're making progress in the back nine. This is a tough putt because it really launched itself off of the fringe, but it got me within range of a par putt there that I could make. So see if I can tap in for par. From about, it's not quite a tap in, it's like a three footer, but it went in. Okay, par, par three. All right, hole number 14, 499 yard par five, handicap two, 499 yards from the, the regular tees. Certainly further from the Jack Nicholas tees, but fun rating eight, fear rating four. This is a pretty scary, I mean, we had a scary hole number nine, par five. This one is right there, almost right there with it. Fun rating eight, yeah, it's fun, but it's pretty scary. Why is it so scary? Well, you got a bunker over on the right, out of bounds further than that on the right. You've got a bunker on the left, guarded by a tree. Lots of, uh, lots of hazards. And they're right in that, that strike zone where it's like, if I hit a good drive, I gotta go right in between. Well, luckily I did, so I was right in between here. But then you've got this, this bunker in front of the green. I mean, it's just, you cool it with the bunkers, Jack Nicholas. Jeez. I was like, all right, I just need to, <laughs> just need to hit the ball right of the bunker. And so I was like, I'm just going to hit a low iron, but then it drew right directly into that bunker right in front of the green. So, I mean, look at this, like, uh, you know, out of bounds to the right of the green. It's a very narrow approach shot. So that's, that's part of the reason it gets a little bit more of a scary rating. That was a pretty good bunker shot, but it landed short of the hole. So now I'm chipping for birdie. Yeah, there's like nothing behind that green. If you fly the green long, you're just out of bounds. So. Well designed. I mean, I act like, you know, this is a bad thing. That these court, these holes are difficult, but I mean, it's a proper challenge and they keep such good care of the course that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite fun. If you play well here, you really earn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's the park uh, putt that's missed. So almost salvaged par despite hitting the, uh, fairway bunker there in front of the green. Hole number 15, uh, handicap two. We already had a handicap two. Well, maybe there, <laughs> maybe there's a small error there. That's okay. Uh, hole number 15, difficult hole. Fear rating nine, fun rating 14. So it's not super long, but there's some obstacles here and the fun rating does not match. So I'm giving it a bogey hole. Let's see what happened here. Okay, well, I hit a tee shot. <laughs> we didn't film the tee shot, but it just, it didn't even bounce. I hit a driver. <laughs> it didn't even bounce. It 
lodged itself in the in the side like where you see it there in the grass like right above the bunker and so i was like hmm i could stand in the bunker like this and try to hit it but then i was like no i'm just gonna fall down so then i was like i have a uh, like a, a putter that goes both right-handed and left-handed it's like a, I, I could try to hit a, a, a lefty shot and i was like no so I took an unplayable lie. And so what I do when I, like for myself, as long as, I feel like as long as you're consistent with what you normally do in decisions like this, you're okay if you're not like a pro golfer. So I just, when I, I took an unplayable lie, I was like, I'm just gonna uh, place it next to the, to the bunker here and play a regular shot and not count a penalty. Cause I felt like, well, like, I don't know, couldn't do anything better. It's like when I go on a cart, if it lands on the cart path and I can't play it from there, take a club length and don't penalize myself. So I actually hit a really good eight iron, but it bounced to the right. And I was like, man, I hit a good shot. No reward. Cause there's like this rim on the, on the, like a turtle back green, as they say. And it bounced off to the right, even though the shot was like pretty close to going on the green. Well, anyway, birdie chip here. I kind of launched it into it. Now, finally there was an uphill chip. So I got saved by the hill there. And then I've got a par putt coming back down. So, adventures at Dove Canyon. Oh man, couldn't buy a putt either. All right, another bogey. Hole number 16. This one doesn't stand out among the finishing holes. The 17 and 18 stand out to me quite a lot. Uh, hole 16, not as much. Fear rating 14, not super scary. Fun rating 16, quite low actually compared to some of the others bogey hole. Let's take a look. I mean, you're, you're again, you're, you're more in the nature than in the neighborhood. So I always appreciate that. The creativity of the course designer to be able to design a hole like this. So that's true. Like throughout the round, maybe just this hole didn't stand out as much as the others. I almost hit into the fairway bunker, but I didn't. Whew. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try to hit a fade again. Oh man, this is the theme of the day. The fade go, that's that shot tracer doesn't didn't quite capture the uh i mean look at this bunker <laughs> this is a massive bunker i probably should have given this hole a much greater fear rating just by the size of this bunker but a lot of holes have big bunkers Jeez, i mean was there sand in dove canyon when jack nicholas arrived because if so it makes sense to have all these bunkers but otherwise it's just he's just torturing us all right <laughs> so um we've got a bunker shot here i'm pausing it because like this is going to be a fun one to watch. I hit the ball. I got to tell you what happened. I hit the ball. It's a really good bunker shot. Finally. I, I mean, I'd struggled as you could tell. And I didn't know what happened because my head is below the, the, the level of the, the, the bunker there. <laughs> it's so deep. So I was like, Oh, I hope it's good. That was my only thought. I didn't know what happened, but watch what happens. I told you it was a good shot. I'm trying to build up the drama here. I did do a couple things right on this day. Let's try it out. Let's check it out. Okay, here it comes. I'm not looking and, oh, whoa, it almost it hit the flag. <laughs> and it didn't go in. And in fact, I hit it with such force that I actually <laughs> had a, a decently long par putt afterwards. Oh man. Couldn't buy a break on this on this uh, particular day. That could have gone in. It would have been a nice birdie. Instead, I got a little tight on the putt and I made bogey again. Sad. <laughs> All right, hole number 17. This one we should talk about too. In fact, we should talk about this one a good amount. This is fun rating number one and it's a par three. Fear rating six, not quite as high, but still pretty high. Let me just show you the visual here. Uh, the tee shot. This is a massive drop, like from tee to green. And it's really, it goes down into the canyon. It's basically from the top of the canyon to the bottom. And it's super cool. I mean, you got these, this, these trees down there behind the green. I mean, obviously the, the, the key and the reason why it's fear rating six is because you got to get the ball in the air. But what happened here was that my friend who was playing with me teed off before I did. And he hit a shot that was like, it hit the, there's like this tier of the green in the back where the pin was. You can kind of see it there if you peer in there. He hit a shot, it hit the edge of the tier and rolled down and was like 
I don't know, two inches from a hole in one. And I almost fell over and started running down. I mean, I was so excited for him. And so then, like, if you if you see a shot by a playing partner that's so brilliant, I mean, it was almost a hole in one. I mean, really close. Then what's the psychology there? The psychology there is to have that, like, that uh, mojo, that, that good feeling rub off on you. Don't try to compare yourself. Oh, I'll never hit a good shot like that or a shot as good as that. Don't do that. <laughs> Be like, wow, this is a special place. This is a special hole. I'm going to hit a great shot now or at least one that I enjoy because I'm just, I just enjoyed the fact that that other ball almost went in. Okay, so I'm trying to draw on those, not en that energy. Whenever you see positive energy, fun events out on a golf course, try to pull from that energy. And I did. This was a good shot. I actually cooked it a little bit too far with my eight iron. And so I couldn't quite match the, uh, the result. But here's, uh, here's my friend's ball. It went, it, it rolled right by the hole. You, his is on the right. Mine's here on the left. And of course I ruined the vibe with a three putt. <sighs> I was like, I want a birdie. So then I smashed it. Well, didn't, didn't uh, do myself any favors there. My friend, meanwhile, made birdie. So I initially drew from that positive energy and it helped me, but the putter was just not my friend on this particular day. All right. Still enjoyed that hole because I almost, almost saw a hole in one and it was a fun rating one. I'd like to go back someday and play that hole. I really would. All right, hole number 18, also very fun. Lots of variety on hole number 18. A great finishing hole. Not surprising if you're, you've got a pro golfer Nicholas, <laughs> uh, designing a course, have a, have a good finishing hole. Um, so uh, par four, uh, water eventually comes in on the right uh, and then out of bounds is on the left. So fear rating is three. What did I say? Fear rating three, fun rating six. So pretty high on both scales. This one, like if I were to blast my driver off to the right, I would probably roll into the water. It wouldn't land in the water, but I was like, ah, I just need to hit a kind of a, I don't know, this is the equivalent of a three wood for me, something that was not smacked quite as hard as I could. It started fading toward the water. I was like, no, but I didn't hit it that hard. So that was good. Look at this view. I mean, this is a huge waterfall. I know it's a, it's like a double waterfall on the right side that I'm about to hit the ball into. Well, no, not quite. I faded it too much, but it landed above the bunker finally, as opposed to into it. Whew. Let me just freeze it on that view again for a minute. You've got a waterfall uh, feeding into a pond. Then above that, you've got another section of the waterfall that you can't see. And then behind the green is the same waterfall at a different stage with rocks there. Let's, let's check out the other, um, the green side view here. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. I mean, lots of scenery. All right, so I cleared the bunker and I'm trying to make par because I, I'd like to be plus 17 instead of plus 18 at least for this particular round. And I hit a great chip, so that was probably my other best shot of the day. I was able to, to drain this, almost tap in for par. All right, so let's talk about this round as a whole. All right, so I'm gonna give you all a, a sports psychology strategy that you can use um, if you're trying to learn how to make adjustments after a day in your sport where you didn't perform the way you maybe you hoped, um, like I didn't perform the way I hoped at Dove Canyon um, and <laughs> it wasn't like a terrible day for me, but it just, it wasn't the best either. So the strategy is to look at um, uh, attribution uh, here, either internal or external attributions. So trying to explain, look back at your round, first of all. It's good to always look back and try to learn from things, right? So you look back and then you look back at events and you try to figure out, is this because, is this, did, was this good shot because I'm a good golfer? or did I get lucky? Internal would be that you, internal locus of control we talk about. Internal would be, I hit a good shot because I'm a good golfer. Uh, external would be, I hit a, a good shot because I got lucky. Same thing with the bad shots. Internal would be like, I hit a bad shot because I'm a bad golfer. <laughs> external would be, I hit a bad shot because I got unlucky. Right, so there's like four different categories there, internal, external, good and bad shots. 
And so what I've done uh, for you all to just model this uh, briefly is to look back at my worst shots of the day and look back at my best shots of the day and then we'll talk about some internal and external uh, attribution and figure out what's what we what we're going for what what's best internal stuff external stuff all right so i'm gonna rewind to the third hole this was a double bogey and this was a, a sand shot that flew over the green sand a bunker shot that was way oh okay that was terrible it's my first bunker shot of the day all right well what about this one this was my six iron on uh, hole number seven which was a fade that almost went out of bounds but didn't so I'm going to pause here on this shot, and I, I talked about this already. I was trying to hit fades, and they were fading too much. So that, like, that was a consistent thing that happened throughout the round, and so it became an internal thing. I am unable to fade the ball uh, with control. I'm able to fade it, but it fades too much. So that was definitely an internal thing. I was struggling with golf in this particular area on that day. It was not anybody's fault but mine. So I went home after the round and I was trying to review this stuff. And I, I said, okay, I'm gonna just stop fading the ball. Talked about this a little bit after the third hole in the video. I, I tried to stop fading the ball. And that was a huge, huge thing for me because the next round that I played, I went down to Torrey Pines in San Diego, played the North course and I shot a 77, not making this stuff up. I could show you the scorecard, I won't do it. The following round after that, well, maybe two, two rounds later, played golf about three times since Dove Canyon. The most recent one, I just shot a 75 at a course at Griffith Park in LA, which was, a, I mean, that was a record for me. Stopped trying to fade the ball. I just tried to either draw it or hit it straight, and it started going straight, or sometimes fading, but I, it became very predictable for me. That was a huge adjustment. So, internal, Causation, you don't want to get like, man, like, I just, I, I can't control my fade. I'm done for. I'm going to go out and stink the next time I play golf. Okay, so internal uh, attribution there is a bad thing if you don't have a solution, if you don't have a strategy, if you haven't learned from it in a way that um, inspires you to make an adjustment. But it, on the opposite side, if it's internal and you're taking responsibility for it, that gives you something to work on. And so you maybe you, you employ a strategy, maybe you take a lesson, something like that. So there was nothing external about my fades that day. It was all my fault. <laughs> Luckily, I corrected it later uh, in my golf career most recently. All right, uh, what else? Okay, so this was the my other couple of bad shots here. This was a driver that went out of bounds on the right side. That one, that one I did not, I mentioned in the video, I did not know that the hole was so narrow on the right side. So it wasn't a terrible shot. So I'm gonna go external with that one. I didn't know where to hit it. I, it was a difficult hole, not worried about it. This one was my other bad bunker shot on hole number 10. Granted, I finally had a good bunker shot later. This was the one, it was, it was two bad bunker shots in a row. So with the bunker shots, I'm not a great bunker player. I'm not a terrible bunker player either. That's kind of my self-concept there. So if we're talking about attribution, I'm gonna blame the Dove Canyon bunkers. <laughs> and it's tough because I'd never played the course before, so I didn't know like what the sand was like, right? Some sand is a little more wet. This is a little bit, this was dry sand, but it was not giving me a, a, I just couldn't get a feel out of this particular sand and there was a lot of it. <laughs> so like I went out the next, round I didn't I didn't worry about this I'm going external with this one it's not my bunker game that's the problem yes I got rattled after hitting some bad bunker shots but it's it, I'm gonna go external with that one so really the only internal like attribution for me for bad shots is the fact that I was fading the ball uncontrollably that day it gave me something to work on and it really helped the next time when I made the adjustment bunker shots and that one bad driver yeah I'm not, I didn't, I chose not to worry about it. I chose, and so in general, like you wanna be judicious about this. You don't wanna just attribute everything to external causes. You don't wanna just attribute everything to internal causes either. And if you attribute a bad shot to an internal cause, then it's time to take action, try to correct that. That's, what, that's where coaching comes in. All right, what about the good shots? Uh, so this was, 
a sand wedge on the first hole gave me a chance for birdie. I ended up settling for par, but right out of the, out of the gate, I hit a good sand wedge. So that was encouraging more of that to come. I mean, look at this hole six. Here's my sand wedge that almost landed in the cup, rolled a little bit past. I missed the putt, but still another good sand wedge. How about this one? This was, I mean, these are the reasons why I made par in these holes is because I hit my sand wedge and it almost went in a couple times. This is another one, almost went in. And then this was a pitching wedge, still a short shot. It was about 100 yards on 13. This was the one, this was the one where I started to feel like, hey, I'm going to stop fading the ball. And I finally hit it straight. So that was a harbinger of things to come for me. Eh, I mean, I didn't, that was the only shot like that that I hit that day. So not a lot to attribute it to there. But look at this. This is 18. This is my fourth good sand wedge of the day. Like sand wedge followed by one putt for maybe three of those. So I hit some good sand wedges. Sand wedges, by the way, that I hit a sand wedge for all of my chips and pitches around the green. So I'm not trying to hit a lob wedge. I'm not trying to hit a, a low pitching wedge typically. I'm just trying to hit the one club. And so if I'm looking back at my pars on this particular day, like most of them, maybe majority of them were because I hit a good chip. I wasn't hitting greens. I was hitting good chips to within short putts. So my chipping game, was I'm, I'm going internal good shots with that internal cause i'm a good um, player with the with the sand wedge around the greens and that really carried over to those other good rounds that i just mentioned i was able to miss the green and still chip within close and make par uh, quite a number of times the last few weeks so if if either your putter or your chipping club if one of those two is a strength that's a good thing right now it's my Sandwich, not not so much my putter, but <laughs> but my sandwich. So I, I can miss a green and still have confidence that I can still make par, even if I'm uh, hitting a short chip from off the green. So uh, with the good shots, again, there's no correct way. No, like you don't. It shouldn't all be internal. You need to be realistic. <laughs> so every single good shot you hit shouldn't be like, oh, it's because I'm good at that. Eh, maybe you're good at the sandwich chip shots, like I am right now. Um, but like other good shots, eh, I mean, sometimes the external cause is also key because like you want, like I said, you want to be honest with yourself. If you're honest with yourself, not every good shot you hit is going to be because you're skilled. Many of them will be, but some, sometimes you'll get a little bit lucky. Um, that's okay. You don't have to, um, be like if you're, if you're attributing every single good shot to an internal cause, then you're eh, borderline unrealistic. You're not confident anymore. You're more like cocky or something. I don't know. It's just it's, that's not what I recommend. So just be judicious with your choices here, internal versus external locus of control. And keep trying to get better. If, you're, if you really care about a sport, try to, you know, and, and for your performance, then try to keep making adjustments and being realistic with this stuff. And... Uh, yeah, it's working for me right now. It, not not evident at Dove Canyon, but it's working for me. All right, well, uh, that's the video. Uh, thanks again to Gabe at Dove Canyon for the access. It was a great course. I'd love to come back and shoot a, eh, hit a few more iron shots that are better next time. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was it was super fun and um, grateful for the opportunity.